A spiraling violence in uh, Israel's Arab sector continues. Six people wounded this uh, evening uh, as, uh, uh, as masked uh, attackers uh, entered a uh, home in Kafr Khanna um, and began shooting around. Um, and uh, we want to uh, cross now uh, live to Mr. Mohammad Daraush, a political analyst and faculty member at the Shalom Hartman Institute, for some more insight and perhaps um, some solutions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Daraush, for joining us. So, what, what is it the government or, or law enforcement authorities can and should do? Well, uh, good evening, Eli. I think there are two aspects of all of this. One is, uh, uh, first of all, Israel need, needs to govern within the Arab community. Right. A government does not govern within the Arab community, not with security aspects, meaning police force, Shabak, and all other arms of the law enforcement. Uh, the Israeli government, the state of Israel is almost absent in Arab towns. Not only that, but it's also absent in many other fields. When you when they talk about cutting budgets, budgets the need the budgets that are needed are almost three times the budgets allocated, and this government allows itself to extend its arms to even the small amounts that are needed to invest in young people to make sure that they do not go to crime, they do not go to antisocial activities. Almost 30% of Arab youth between the ages of 18 to 24, 30% early are not working and not in, in, in not working and not studying. They're floating, doing nothing for almost six years in their life, and it's their easy hunt for the crime gangs that want to recruit them for only maybe 200 shekels. Just take a gun and go shoot on someone because he owes me 500 shekels. You know, it's it's that simple to get dragged into crime into the Arab community. We need we need a, two, a number of aspects. One, very harsh arm that comes and crushes the crime gangs. Some of those gangs are 300 members. We're talking about small armies that society alone cannot handle. I cannot put together a body that can handle 300 armed, gun, armed people right. to try to convince them to get, get off this matter. It's not only about education, education, can prevent or cultural moral activities can maybe prevent the next criminal to join. We need to try to prevent the next criminals to join those gangs. But to handle those existing gangs, we need harsh arm of the government to come in and crush them. But, but Mr. Darasha, you've mentioned uh, earlier um, the, the Sheen Bet Security Agency that is now tasked uh, to help police. Obviously, deterrence is part of it, but, but is it the right move? Is it going to indeed assist? And, and also, uh, what are the ramifications of turning a, a civilian issue into a national security one, or at least treating it with uh, national security tools? Probably there, are, there will probably be bad implications. But for now, we are at the situation where it's impossible to live here. And myself and many of my friends are considering moving out. Where to? To possibly neighboring Jewish towns. Uh, leaving many of the Arab families in, in, and, the, and the ones that cannot make that choice and then escape, actually, the ones that cannot escape will probably stay stuck in the middle of this. So if we need Shabak or you know what, the KGB and the CIA and uh, you know MI6, whatever, yeah. bring whoever can solve the problem in the next one, two, three years until we dig out these rooted crime gangs and try to stabilize the Arab community. And then we then I'll be the first person to fight back for civilian engagement of, of the uh, of the security forces in Israel. Right now we are in a crisis. Right now we are at war. If Israel would have lost 150 to 160 citizens against a foreign army, Israel would have staged the war and probably would have put right. Sahal and the Shabak and the Mossad and probably brought the USA to try to get involved and bring in tanks and, and, and airplanes to get involved in this matter. This is a huge problem that it seems that we're talking to deaf ears right now in the government. This government does not see the huge size of the problem. We're here, we today are talking about almost 160 people in eight months. It means we're waiting for 80 more people. Right. And not only that, Eli, we're talking about 11 Arab mayors who complained that their life is in danger. We're talking about at, at least four Arab members of the Knesset who complained to the police that their life is in danger from these gangs. Isn't, isn't this national security issue? This is a national security issue.
Indeed, and just earlier in the broadcast, uh, we reported that the leader of the uh, Joint Arab List, uh, lawmaker Ayman Ode, um, due to those uh, uh, concrete uh, threats of his life, uh, or, um, to his life, is uh, receiving a security detail, um, according to the uh, parliament's uh, officer's uh, direction. Um, so, um, uh, indeed, an escalating situation by the second, which is becoming more and more political. And in this respect, Mr. Dalausha, um, this evening as we speak, uh, those uh, weekly uh, anti-judicial uh, uh, overhaul uh, protests are, are, are taking uh, place. And this time around, putting a spotlight on the situation in the Arab sector, it, politically speaking, is it going to help the cause or rather undermine it? I think it's going to help the cause because this, this issue, the issue of crime in the Arab community is not an Arab problem. This is a national Israeli problem. And the more Israeli Jewish citizens can see that this is part of their life. Because the fact that their doctor does not feel safe at home, it means that that doctor is not is probably not going to be functioning in the best way possible. And 24% of the doctors are Arab. Right. The fact that their bus driver does not feel safe at home, it means that he's not focusing on during his driving his bus. The fact that the nurse that 44% of the nurses in Israeli Jewish society are Arab citizens, the fact that they don't feel safe. The fact that 55% of the pharmacists in Israel who are Arab citizens do not feel safe and are concerned about their beloved ones and if they're going to be able to come back home and see their, their wife or their children or their mother or their brother alive or not. This is a society. Jewish and Arab societies are so integrated within each other today that we cannot say that this problem is only an Arab problem. This problem is a larger Israeli problem. I hope the government will not politicize it. I hope that it's not only the demonstrators in Kaplan Street today and in the other hundred other points in Israel that are demonstrating, which are, I'm, I'm grateful to the fact that they are mm. taking this as their responsibility. And I'm hoping also that people from the right wing will take this as also their responsibility, will extend this hug to Arab society, which is, as I say, this part yes. of the medical industry, part of the high tech industry, part of the universities. Yeah. We are one society at the end of the day, and we have to stand together. Yes, uh, literally time to pull out the heavy guns. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Araush, political analyst and faculty member at the Shalom Hartman Institute, uh, uh, thank you so very much uh, for this. Uh, we appreciate your, your time, your insight. Thank you, sir.